Welcome, welcome to To The Point. Uh, we have another, hopefully, very, very interesting programme for you tonight, all about how we balance. Now, we take our balance very much for granted, um, but it is totally supernatural. It's amazingly supernatural. Uh, we have in the studio with us tonight, as always, Dr. Laura Richardson. Good evening, Laura. Hello. <laughs> welcome to another programme. And Laura's going to tell us all about what can go wrong with our balance on occasions. Um, we're going to be talking about how we balance our lives according to Jesus Christ. Um, Laura, have you got any thoughts about balancing? So, as you said, we, when it goes right, when it's working in full working order, we don't really notice there's a problem. But as I have to say later on, a lot of patients come in with balance problems mm. and, and life's, life's not funny. Some of them can't actually get out of bed. And as we know, falls in the elderly uh, can be related to balance problems. So I'll be talking a little bit about that later on. But yes, balance is, is so important, isn't it? Balance is totally uh, important. We take it very much for granted. It takes a child, I believe, um, until they're much older to learn to fully balance. But here, here's a, a short presentation about balance. Hello, my name's Richard Kent. Uh, today I'd like to talk about how we balance. Now, it's really important that we balance, we take it all for granted, but actually balance is one of the most complicated things that we will learn to do. Uh, children, when they're little babies, they have to learn to balance so they can stand up. And, and you notice when children first start to walk, they have difficulty balancing because it actually involves all of the various different systems in our bodies. It involves the skeletal system, our central nervous system, uh, it involves uh, our eyesight, it involves the uh, sense sensations we get from our hands and our feet, um, and also in particular involves our, our gyroscope effectively, the um, semicircular canals in our middle ear. So I want to concentrate now on these semicircular canals. There are three of them in three different planes, um, and they're very, very cleverly designed. Um, effectively, they actually are like gyroscopes. Um, they, they're made in three planes, and in the center of each uh, semicircular canal um, is fluid, which as you move around, as we move our head around up and down, the fluid actually stays more or less where it is, but the, um, the, the semicircular canals move around with our head. Now, there are little hairs um, pointing inwards in each canal in three different planes, which can detect movement. And that movement is relayed electronically uh, through the vestibular nerve to the balance center in our cerebral cortex. Um, now, we can overcome uh, the balance center, and it does happen occasionally. For example, if you were on a merry-go-round in a, in a fun fair and you were whizzing around very fast, what actually is happening is the actual fluid in your semicircular canal is actually moving because you're whizzing around so fast. And then when you become stationary, your, uh, the fluid in your vestibular canals is still moving. And that's why you can't actually balance correctly. Now, balance is seriously complex. It's not a simple thing at all, because your, your central computer system, your brain, which uses 20% of the energy of your body, has to have uh, uh, sensations from everywhere in your body. It, uh, throughout your body, you have sensation, uh, sensory, uh, uh, sensory perception from your skin, and you have proprioception um, in all your joints and muscles and tendons so that your, your body knows exactly where every single bone, every single joint, what every, every single part of you, what it's doing right now. And what, you, what your brain does is it collates all this information, what you can see, that the horizontal horizon, what you can hear, and in particular where you are in time and space, in, in terms of your vestibular uh, stimuli from your semicircular canals, and then keep correcting each of your um, joints, your muscles, your lumbar spine, um, all of the other joints, so that you keep, right now you're probably sitting in a chair. And that is actually very complex, because what is actually happening is your 
uh, your brain is actually sending n uh, nervous stimuli to the, um, the muscle fibers in your back and in your pelvis and in your legs and in your chest and in your arms and in your neck to keep you stationary by continually uh, contracting and relaxing the muscle fibers. And that itself, just the contracting and relaxing muscle fibers, itself is seriously complicated and we'll be doing that another time. But the whole business is really, really complicated and the evolutionists want us to think that um, 3.8 billion years ago there were prokaryotic um, primitive uh, cells which evolved uh, um, spontaneously in their primordial slime and amongst other things they developed balance. Absolute garbage. This is garbage of the first order. Balance is highly, highly complex. Um, I don't think it would be possible to get a machine to, to replicate exactly what the human body does as we balance. So thank you for listening and God bless you. Welcome back to To The Point. Well, as you can see, balance really is complex and I believe they, have, uh, they do have robots these days, but I don't think you'll be able to get a robot to uh, do handstands and, and, do, uh, and do ballet dancing and all the things that the human body does. What do you think, Nora? No, you're absolutely right. And, and I see in my practice on a daily basis patients who come in absolutely devastated when the balance mechanism is wrong in one way or the other. And sometimes it can actually affect their work. For instance, a pilot or a scuba diver instructor um, because they do need a good sense of balance. You don't want to get on a plane and know that your, your pilot is suffering from motion sickness, do you? <laughs> you would not be too happy. <laughs> or or that the, your, your, your scuba diving instructor suddenly feel a little bit wobbly as they dive slightly <laughs> deeper into the... And, and seriously, this is how balance can affect people. Yes. Um, and there are some people who um, cannot go on certain rides when they go to you know, Alton Towers or places like that because when they've been turned and twisted and rotated they come out and they really can't, um, they don't know, they're disorientated. So balance is very important and an overview of balance of the mechanism there are external factors, peripheral uh, factors and there are central factors that uh, affect um, the balance. So let's just have a look at this first uh, image. So you've got the, the, the eyes, important, as you were saying, Richard, traffic moving, very important that you're able to coordinate your, what your, your eyes are saying. With moving in a car, with rotating, turning your head to look um, to your right before you overtake, with, you know, just moving forward. And mm. so you have, God has created this amazing system um, that allows communication of all these factors, the eyes, the ears, the inner ear. In particular, we're going to be talking a little bit about the conditions in the, in the inner ear that can be affected. So the first condition that I want to talk about is something called BPPV, which is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And this is a condition that affects mainly women. It's more common in women than men. And it's a condition that is caused by a change in position. So somebody, a patient, will come in and say, I've been to the hairdressers, and when I, when I was having my hair washed, I suddenly sat up and I felt all funny, and it lasted about a minute or two. Um, some people will complain of getting out of bed, and suddenly everything feels like it's swimming around as well. So changes in head posture, bending forward, licking up, licking down in the hairdressers will bring this filling on. So it's provoked by a changing posture. Now these, this is as you mentioned in your presentation Richard, that's the semicircular canal. Um, you've got three parts to it, the horizontal, the uh, posterior and anterior and they all, they all sort of gauge movements and they have this fluid in them that helps to, to, to signal to the brain in what position they're moving. In addition to the semicircular canal, you've got the utricle and the saccule, mm. which also can, this contains the very, very sensitive positional, especially for rotation and, and um, looking up and down. So when there's a problem like in benign positional vertigo, these, these are, the utricle and saccule have little ophelates in them, the little um, particles that when they move, they help to give signals for position of movement but unfortunately these particles can become dislodged 
and they find themselves in the semicircular canal. And when this happens, they're not supposed to be there. And again, Richard, this just comes back to the way our bodies have been created by God. They're so specific that if in a, in a little, in a very little chamber like the inner inner ear, you've got these ophelets which are meant to be in the utricles. Mm. But if they find themselves in the semicircular canals, which are just a couple of literally millimeters away from the utricles, just having them in the wrong place completely changes the way a person perceives balance. And it's so fine-tuned, it mm. really, really is. Mm. And so for somebody who's got benign position of vertigo, they will come into the surgery because they, you know, everything's that will move their head and they feel really wobbly. And we'll do a dis, what they call a dis whole pike test, which is which involves moving the heads in certain position to see if we can lodge, um, move the crystals about to prove the diagnosis. And when this happens, their eyes they get this very very rapid eye moving called nystagmus, which helps with the di um, the diagnosis. And of course, BPBV can be corrected. There is a manoeuvre called the Eplis manoeuvre. I've only attempted it once, Richard. Did you ever do the no. Eplis? Maneuver. <laughs> it's so cumbent. My fear, I have to say, there's, there's one of my uh, colleagues in the practice who's very good at epilepsy maneuvers, and I usually say to the patient, go and see Dr. So and so to have this done because it, I really oh, I have this fear of wringing the patient's neck. And <laughs> 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 because it does involve, you know, they have to lie back and then you have to turn the head to 45 degrees and move their head backwards and you sort of hold in their head and turn it round and get into and it just petrifies me. So I don't do the Epley's manoeuvre. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole point of the Epley maneuver is to get the crystals back into the places where they're supposed to be, out of the semicircular canal, back into the utricles where they're meant to be. And once that maneuver is corrected, it might need to be repeated again, and patients might have to sort of sit upright for a little while to settle it. So there you have it, and there you've got the um, the displaced um, otoconia ot or otholites. The next condition I want to talk about very briefly is many years disease. Uh, sorry, labyrinthitis. Thank you. And labyrinthitis occurs usually due to a viral infection where you get swelling, basically, of the, um, of the semicircular canal and the vestibules. And, and you, you've got a similar condition called vestibular neuritis, which again is due to infection mainly. Meniere's can also be due to an autoimmune condition. So people have Meniere's if they're, they're making antibodies against their own, um, their own autoimmune team in the inner ear. Meniere's can be corrected in, in sometimes salt, a high salt diet is implicated. So having a, a low salt diet it, um, could work and, and some they may need some vestibular rehabilitation to basically get them um, to cope with this condition. Another condition very quickly is VBI, vertebral basal insufficiency, and that's really to do with the blood supply to the brain. And of course, as you saw from the first diagram, it's not just the eyes um, are affected, it's not just the inner ear, the brain has to coordinate to the back of the brain, has to coordinate all this with the help of a cerebellum to get people feeling normal and, and having normal balance. And sometimes what happens is that with VBI, um, there is a lack of blood supply Mm. to the brain. It's almost like, I don't know if you remember the, 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 um, the Avengers when they used to, <laughs> what was it, Mr. Steed who used to <laughs> give them a karate chop to their neck and then faint or something like that because they were getting at their, kar their carotids. <laughs> but anyway, something similar, if people start to develop arthritis, um, it can affect the way that it can kink, it can basically, in layman's terms, kink the blood supply to the brain and cause a problem when they move their heads. And finally, I'd like to briefly talk about falls in the elderly. It's a very, very common problem, and this is because of multi-factors. As people are getting older, they're, they're, um, there's a lot of the aging process involves. They're taking um, certain lots of medication. They may not be exercising as much, so they have lots of muscle weakness. Their vision might be impaired, and of course, we need vision. The, we need the signals from vision, and our eyes need to tell the brain what to do and where we are. So. Um, Age-related falls are very important. They're commoner in, in females. Um, in the over 60s, you have about a third of people who would have an age-related fall. In the over 85s, about half of those, 50% so of people um, who are age of 85 are at risk of having age-related falls. And so it, it gets worse with age. Um, once someone's had a fall, they're less likely to, to become, um, they're less likely to be more active because they're afraid of falling again. 
arthritis, pain from arthritis de decreases the mobility and it means that they're not, um, they're not as steady on their feet. And also at home, in the home, they may have loose clothing, they have the wrong footwear, they may have rugs and, and electrical appliance leads sticking out, they may even have pets that they may be prone to trip over hmm. in their home. Um, elderly people perhaps may not be as hydrated, so they're not drinking enough fluids and they may have low blood pressure as well. So what do we do about that? Once a patient has fallen at least twice, we'll usually get the falls prevention. The GP would, normally the scenario is that the patient falls, they press their alarm, the ambulance paramedics get there, they, they go through the history because they've been out before, the same paramedics have been out before, so they realise you've fallen, once you've fallen twice, they would normally refer the patients to us and we would refer them to the falls prevention uh, service so that they can come to the patient's house, assess their mobility, their vision, and provide mobility aids such as walkers, rails, um, advise them about footwear and clothing, sort out their plugs and all that sort of thing and you'll have a multidisciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary team who would sit down and chat about how to help this patient to remain at home because one of the fears of people who fall apart from the risk of fractures is the fact that they may not be able to stay at home because they keep falling and this this is a tragedy um, and we see it all the time and I'm sure in general practice you did as well. Um, Certainly yeah. did actually. Mm. We've yeah. got a little bit of time Laura. I yes. Want to briefly talk about medications as well. Yeah. Uh, in particular I wonder if you've mentioned postural hypotension maybe. Absolutely. Now for some people um, postural hypertension is, is due to either dehydration, so just not l just lack of, of fluid, but it also could be due to side effects of medication. Like for instance if somebody's on a beta blocker for high blood pressure or maybe they've had a heart attack and they have to be on a beta blocker mm. for a little while, um, uh, they would, um, what happens then is that because of um, the age related as well, but also because of the fact that the, these the beta blockers and some medication act to vasodilate the, the blood vessels. Mm. It means that if they should get up from a position mm. of sitting or standing, mm -hmm. it's almost like how a water tank mm. on a ground floor, the pressure of the water tank on a ground floor can't be the same mm. as the pressure on the water tank on a third floor or a mm. fourth floor, otherwise it'll be trickles. So the body has to accommodate very rapidly mm. to the change in gravity and of course if patients are on medication that causes vasodilation or they're dehydrated mm. the blood the circulation cannot respond quickly enough to pump the blood to increase the pressure mm. and therefore they have a, 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 a sort of mismatch of um, mm. oxygen to the brain basically and that can cause them to feel faint when they stand up suddenly so postural hypertension is, is, is really quite important and it may be due to medication like, like beta blockers, certain diuretics will cause um, the same thing, certain calcium channel blockers as well will cause the same thing, although that affects directly on the heart. Mm, um, okay. So if, if your relative is falling a lot, make sure you check the medication because it might mean that they need to adjust their medication. And if you're an elderly person, you or even a younger person, make sure you're drinking enough water because it could be something as simple as just not enough water. Yes, uh, it's a long time since I was a GP, 20 years actually, but I remember visiting the elderly in old people's homes and very often they would feel faint simply because they hadn't been drinking enough uh, water. They'd been drinking maybe tea and coffee, which is of course diuretic, but they hadn't been drinking enough water. And sometimes they'll feel faint because they, nobody realised it, but they had an infection like a, a urine infection or a chest infection or even flu, and they would, nobody realised it, but they just feel faint. Anyway, let's move on and just say, and by the way, thank you, Laura, for an absolutely wonderful uh, exposition of dizziness. But our balance is really, really, um, it's so complicated. And I did actually mention that a robot, you couldn't get a robot to do that. Um, you couldn't get a robot to, to do, um, sorry, ballet dancing or athletics or jump hurdles or ride a pony or a horse or run a marathon, or, or all these things that we all take for granted. Imagine getting a, um, a robot to, to uh, you know, do a, 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 a jump using those poles, I forget what you call them now, but anyway, using those pole jumps and jumping, I don't know, 20 feet up in the air, whatever they do. Um, our, hu our human body is fantastically designed by God. So I've just got a couple of slides, one more slide I think to show you maybe. Um, 
as Laura was saying, we do have this really complex balance system. It is actually based in our, the balance part of our ears, um, uh, but it's, it, it's uh, the nearest things that humans have come to is a, is a gyroscope. But actually what we have in our ears is far more complex than a gyroscope, because a gyroscope is stationary. You see, if you have a gyroscope on your table, the, the actual um, physical gyroscope is stationary. But of course our bodies are not stationary, our bodies are spinning and moving all the time. So what God has designed is something far more complex than a gyroscope. A gyroscope, uh, God's gyroscope effectively, works in a moving body. So when you're running a marathon or, or running over hurdles or whatever it is you're doing, your balance still works in concert with your hearing and your eyesight and all the other sensations coming to your brain from all the nervous systems throughout your body. I think there's one more picture maybe. Um, so our nervous system is, of course, um, intimately involved with our balance and within our muscles we have what's called proprioception which you probably haven't heard of before. Um, it basically it tells our brain, our central processing system, what state of stretch or relax our muscles and tendons are. See our muscles when we contract them, um, what's happening is muscles uh, are fi muscle fibers are firing and then relaxing. Um, and basically, uh, in order to stand up or sit up or, or stand or run or talk or anything to do with our, our muscles, uh, basically the tension in our muscles is constantly changing. It's an incredibly complex mechanism. And our balance involves our eyesight, our hearing, uh, looking at the horizon, uh, keeping a constant uh, sort of um, attention to exactly where our all the parts of our body are in time and space. Um, we, uh, I'm not thinking about it, and nor are you, but at all the time our, our, our body is subconsciously processing where our head is, where our eyes are looking, what we're listening to, all the sensations from uh, our skin, the temperature of the body, um, all sorts of things are going on and we take it all for granted and it's all totally supernatural. It didn't happen by chance. It couldn't possibly have happened by chance. That's a fairy story. It really is complete garbage. Um, but actually, more than that, I believe you've got a scripture for us, uh, Laura. Indeed, indeed. And this is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 to 34. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. So we're going to talk a little while, we've got a few minutes left, about the balancing our lives. Now, I have to be honest, I am not good at this. I am not good at this. I'm learning. Maybe Laura will be able to do, tell, me, tell us more about this than I can. But basically what God is saying is put God first in our lives on a list of one. Put God first in our lives on a list of one. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. Um, we must put God first before our family, before our jobs, before our money, before our relationships, before our friends, before our time before everything, God in our, on a list of one. And God says that um, actually in Deuteronomy 28 and uh, the first 13 verse, it starts off by saying, listen to what uh, God tells you to do and do it and various blessings, which are basically all the blessings that, that could possibly be, will follow those who listen and do what God's telling you to do. Now, I'm going to be quiet now because maybe Laura's got a lot more to say than I have. No, no, I was, I was just nodding. In fact, as you were saying the Shema, which is called in Israel, they call it Shema, you know, Shema yes, Israel, yeah. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Um, it, it's actually so, I think, when one has been a Christian for a long time, we come back to the place of realizing that God is first and there is no other. He has got that place in our lives and when we give him that place in our lives, everything else falls into place. 
And, and it is something that, you know, I've made lots of times when I thought, oh no, I've got to get out of bed now. I've got to get with my day. Sorry, God, I'll see you later. I'll talk to you later. But, you know, and it's not cliche to say the day has just gone absolutely whatever. Unexpected things crop up. But when I start the day in the morning and with the help of my wood pigeon, who probably sent by the Holy Spirit to wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but when I start the day, I start the day and I make an effort to start the day with God because I know the difference it makes. Not just because, for me actually, I, I'm being selfish, speaking to God and spending time with God makes a difference for me. Never mind God and the fact that he loves to, he inhabits the praises of, our, our pe of his people, but actually spending time with God yeah. makes a difference. And putting him first is, is, is the best thing anybody could do, no matter how strapped for time you are. And, you know, we're all busy, of course we are. And, you know, you, you're, you're a husband, you're a dad, you're a granddad, <laughs> you've got ministry, and, you know, I've got all sorts of going on in my life. I've got this way, I'm sort of stretched this way. I've got the younger ones, I've got the older ones, and, you know, I've got the work people, and it, it's, it's amazing. But I think putting God first is the best thing anyone could do, and do find time. And the more you do it, the more you want to do it, because you notice the benefit of spending time with God. It's, it's the best. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. We've got one minute left. I've got time just for a very short testimony, actually. Um, I'm talking about 1997. I've been very ill in general practice and I had to retire, actually. And, up, and uh, as I was approaching retirement, my income went down by 80% and I was in real trouble financially. And for three months, I asked God to say, please send some money. And God doesn't answer that prayer because it's a selfish prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So I said, I give up, Lord. Take the house, take everything. I'll just tell me what to do for the rest of my life. And the Lord made it very clear to me and my wife to start up a charity, travel all over the world, and give everything away free. Uh, that's, what I, that's what we did for many years. We went to 27 countries and did that. And you know, with it, we had huge debts, massive debts. Within nine months, all of those debts were cleared. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Do write to us at to the point at revelationtv.com. To the point at revelationtv. We'd love to hear from you. Laura, thanks so much for joining us this evening. You're welcome. Telling us all about balance. And do keep it joining. Do join us again. Monday evenings, half past eight. Love to see you.